So from this we have seen that Pij and Pik, Pij, Pik is equal to Pjk, Pij. This number means that these are commuting because these operators are not exactly identical. Pij, Pik, if they commute you will have this is equal to Pik, Pij. But we have seen Pij, Pik is equivalent to Pjk, Pij. And you can prove that this is further equivalent to Pik, Pjk. We will check what will be the result if we perform this operation Pjk first. That is uh, particle exchange 2, 3. 2, 3 exchange will give rise to the system to be appearing as a 1, 2, 3 being modified as a 1, 3, 2. And upon this, we have further exchange between P, I and K. P, I, K is P, 1, 3. 1, 3 exchange means to modify the system with 1 being replaced by 3 and 3 being replaced by 1. To modify the system to have an appearance, say 3, 1, 2 appearance, which is identical with this one and with this one. This indicate that their eigenvalues also will have a similar behavior. Then Pij, Pik is equivalent to lambda ij, lambda ik, that's equal to lambda jk, lambda ij, that's equal to lambda ik, lambda jk. And these are eigenvalues you can cancel equivalent terms. You have lambda ij here and uh, lambda ij here. That give you raise to lambda ik equal to lambda jk. And further from this, you have lambda jk here. Lambda jk will be vanishing. That's equal to lambda ik. Or say lambda ik equal to lambda jk. We have already written here. And from these two, lambda ij. Lambda ij goes to make it say lambda ik equal to lambda jk. Lambda ik equal to lambda jk is written here. Is there any term containing? So upon comparing these two terms, you get lambda ik equal to lambda jk. Lambda ik equal to lambda jk. And upon comparing these two terms, lambda ik is common here. So lambda ik goes lambda ij equal to lambda jk. That means lambda jk equal to lambda ij. This indicate that lambda ij equal to lambda ik equal to lambda jk. So their eigenvalues or eigenvalues of these operators pij, pik and pjk will be exactly equal. So that the eigenvectors of pij, pik and pjk must also be equal. Or these operators will have a common set of eigenvectors. For commutation relation, Allah that then we have to prove it. We have to pij, moon particle exchange operators, pij, pjk, pik, either the talum, all that name eigenvalues are same. Man, so far we have to eigenvectors are same. I mean, name that you have. Ah, eigenvector each in the good a common eigenvector. Ah, we can use it. For commutation rule, then satisfy it. Either till then, kilo mathematics. So common eigenvectors of phi belongs to same eigenvalue. So phi must be a common eigenvector of all these particle exchange operators, two particle exchange operators and the Hamiltonian. And lambda ij can have two choices of values, either plus 1 or minus 1. If it is plus 1, then the verb function must be symmetric. Or this will be always a symmetric wave function and the particle will be always represented by this symmetric wave function. Hence this wave function is often referred to as a totally symmetric wave function. Epodium symmetric in the meaning ilane, mottam symmetric in the vere idhine kodukunnadu. When lambda ij equal to minus 1, then phi will be totally anti-symmetric wave function. Always the particle will be represented by an anti-symmetric wave function. This indicates that the symmetry nature of the wave function of identical particles will be a constant of motion. Or that will be always a conserved quantity. Angana verenam in the endangile, uiru particle peravi edutthu etragala adhe Exist in the now a lifetime mood when are in the verb function the nature or a particular nature I the name of the other other matam some body can party here you know where I'm in the dangly e particle in a some of the chair to follow it must be an inherent property as in the case of spin or statistics and we will come to that idea as a survey right now 
So we came to the conclusion that the symmetry nature of the Burr function for the symmetry nature of the Burr function used to represent a particle must be an inherent property associated with the particle like the spin and the statistics. So in the case of identical particles that is applicable in the case of quantum mechanical particles of course the Burr function can have two different behaviors upon particle depending on whether they undergo a negation under particle exchange operation if they undergo a negation the Burr function is referred to as an anti-symmetric Burr function and if it do not undergo a negation for its Burr function upon particle exchange then it is referred to as a symmetric Burr function. So the symmetry nature of the Burr function is an inherent property of the particles. So do the spin and statistical properties possessed by them. Statistical properties of system will be depending upon of course the number of degrees of freedom and these degrees of freedom will be governed by a distribution law in statistics. In the case of distinguishable identical particles, that is classical identical particles, any permutation of particles will give rise to a new degree of freedom and hence a new state that can be distinguished from the other state. In such a case corresponding to each degree of freedom, the energy possessed will be of the order of e raised to minus e by kt which is referred to as the I mean half kt the average energy associated with each degree of freedom of identical distinguishable particles or classical identical particles is half kt which is the maxwell boltzmann distribution law and the statistics that the particle will be obeying will be then the maxwell boltzmann statistics however in the case of identical indistinguishable particles the Burr function can be either symmetric or anti-symmetric. If this is symmetric, then associated with each degree of freedom, the energy will be of the order of e raised to minus e by kt or band gap energy by kt. And this is referred to as the Bose-Einstein distribution law and the statistics obeyed by such a group of identical distinct indistinguishable particles with a symmetric Burr function is referred to as the Bose-Einstein statistics. Whereas in the case of identical indistinguishable particles with anti-symmetric Burr function, the energy associated with each degree of freedom is 1 by e raised to h nu by kt or e raised to delta e by kt minus 1 which is referred to as the Fermi-Dirac distribution law. And the statistics obeyed by such a system of identical indistinguishable particles with anti-symmetric Burr function is referred to as the Fermi-Dirac statistics. So similar to the statistics which is an intrinsic property or an inherent property, the symmetry of Burr function associated with the particles is also an intrinsic property that permit the classification of particles into two different categories but the classification of identical indistinguishable particles into two different categories these are the bosons and fermions bosons obey bose einstein statistics with the bose einstein distribution law for energy per degree of freedom and are represented by a symmetric wave function whereas fermions will be obeying the Fermi-Dirac statistics and their symmetry for the symmetry nature of the Burr function is anti-symmetric. Beside these two properties, that is symmetry nature of Burr function and the statistics obeyed by them, spin of particles are also an intrinsic property. It is found that bosons have integral spin whereas fermions have half integer spin and the spin of composite particles can be evaluated using or depending upon the number or yeah the number of fermions present in the system whether it is odd or even if it's even this will be giving rise to the formation of a boson now in the case of fermions from the anti-symmetric nature of the Burr function 
there is a limitation for their occupancy per quantum state however such a limitation cannot be observed in the case of bosons which give you rise to a very fundamental law in particle physics that will be exploited always here and there in quantum mechanics referred to as the Pauli's principle and as a special case this is being used for the formulation of the periodic table that is referred to as the Pauli exclusion principle. For a system of two spin half particles that is fermions, let's assume that there are two different quantum states say phi alpha 1 and phi alpha 2 alpha beta namal parne vade alpha 1 alpha 2 enna perile parayunu and suppose you have two different particles <laughs> comprising a system ee systathile rendu quantum states undu rendu particles undu ee rendu particles inde occupancy anusariche oru system aayittu adu behave cheyyum angane anengi aa systathine represent cheya namukku oru wave function use cheyyam that is psi 1 2 psi 1 2 can have two different choices such that particle number 1 occupying this state alpha 1 and particle number 2 occupying the state phi alpha 2 or you can have the occupancy with particles exchanged that is psi 2 1 which is of course particle exchange operating over psi 1 2 and will be equal to phi alpha 1 2 phi alpha 2 1 then the anti-symmetric verb function used to represent such a two-particle fermion system is 1 by root 2. But we have factorial generalization of our person the two-particle number root and the two-factorial. Three-factorial is the two-factorial. Into phi alpha 1 1 phi alpha 2 2 minus phi alpha 1 2 alpha 2 1. This can be conveniently represented in the form of a determinant referred to as the Slater determinant. Slater determinants are the determinants used to represent the verb function of fermionic systems. Then this is equal to phi alpha 1 1 alpha 2 2 1 upon alpha 1 1 but verna alpha 2 2 but verna minus phi alpha 1 2 up alpha 1 2 but verna phi alpha 2 1 but verna commutation of knock and all shill level functions are so 1 by root 2 factorial this determinant now let's assume that both the particles are occupying the same quantum state and an impossible on over quantum state lay ethra particle no in a mingle occupy jia that's why particle is part of the particle. So, in fermions, we can do it in the same way. If both particles are occupying the same states, we can do it in the same way. 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 Yeah, phi alpha 1, 2. That's what I'm saying. Phi alpha 2 is the same as phi alpha 1, 1, alpha 1, 2. Phi alpha 1 and phi alpha 2 are the same as phi alpha 2. That's the same as the two particles in the same state. That's the same as the representation of the mathematical assumption. If you look at that, this row and this row of the determinant are exactly equal. And you know that in the case of a determinant, if two rows or two columns are exactly equal, then the determinant will be vanishing. A determinant is normally used to the verb function or represent the yana. So, the verb function will vanish to you in our term. The verb function will vanish to you in our term. And the symmetric verb function is to the other column. One quantum state will be one particle matra me on the other one. Orang quantum state le, bunyi lagi kan partikel, nama kan part illa, anggane endai kainya le, abu function zero ana, anggane itu abu function do not exist. This can be generalised in the case of an n-particle fermionic system, where the abu function can be written as psi a equal to one by root n factorial phi alpha one one, the boleh ngaji dia madi, alpha one two, etc. alpha one n, alpha two one, alpha two two, etc. phi alpha two n. Etc. Phi alpha n1, alpha n2, etc. Phi alpha n, n. When more than one particle is occupying the same quantum state, either this one or this one or any two rows in the matrix will be 
becoming exactly identical so that the matrix will be vanishing so this give rise to a very fundamental equation for a principle in quantum mechanics referred to as the Pauli exclusion principle and can be stated that uh, the fermionic quantum states are simply occupied or no two fermions will be occupying the same quantum state